and I got multiple questions about the scaffold design template so I want to take this opportunity to explain how to complete it step by step. This is a section of a larger lesson design template but for the purpose of our class I think it would be nice to just focus on this section so that you get it and in other classes you will learn more about the other sections including the procedures um, which can be very detailed and you will make they will make more sense when you start teaching. Okay, so let's start by the learning objectives. So every lesson you have learning objectives and with language being so important, we added language objectives. We have both content and language. This video here that I um, provided to you gives wonderful, wonderful examples of the difference between content and language objectives. Please watch it as uh, you will be exposed to examples in different disciplines. Basically, the content objectives relate to what students will be doing in content, math, history, social, uh, social science, science, um, in the LA, and world languages. And language objectives are what students are, the language that the students are required to use, to read, write, speak, and listen. Uh, to be able to successfully achieve the content objective. So let's say they have to explain a mathematical problem, then the language objectives will have to scaffold that explanation so that students are able to engage with explaining. So for example, students will engage with pair share um, and use the sentence frames to be able to explain a mathematical problem, for example, okay? So, um, there, uh, because we are, we are using the project, the social emotional contest, as a site for us to understand how it is for students who are learning English as an additional language to learn uh, how to be able to achieve or complete the tasks for the project, then these content and language objectives will be related to those tasks, right? So, for example, one of the tasks is writing a, a journal about their daily life in quarantine. So the language object objective could be the students will use talk moves to share um, their diaries, what they wrote in their diaries, for example, okay? Um, so embedded in these language objectives are the academic language demands of in engaging with, uh, let's say, writing a diary, right? Um, so here you have the language function, which is, for example, um, describe your daily routine in quarantine and you have all the vocabulary, syntax, discourse and pragmatics associated with being able to describe your routine uh, in quarantine. So we don't realize the, all the language that goes into being, being able to describe something, for example. Here I provided you with a really good example of a chart of how demanding it is to engage in with these language functions, for example, inform, compare, uh, order, classify, okay? So, for example, if you want to compare something, um, you, you, will, you will have to use all of these different uh, language forms here. And here are some sample questions. So, you can see that there is a lot involved in comparing, okay? Some examples of scaffolds are graphic organizers and think maps that you can use. So this is a really good resource for you to be able to identify the language function that you are focusing on and uh, find some um, scaffolds and some language forms here. Um, then here I have some questions to prompt you to think of Keep thinking of these forms, okay? I want you to be very detailed about the scaffolds that you design. So here is about vocabulary. So you have conceptual vocabulary, but you also have technical words and non-technical words. So as teachers, we tend to focus on the technical words. But for students who are learning English as an additional language, the non-technical words are as hard as the technical words, okay? So I want you to think deeply about these two examples. So think about you learning another language, right? It's not only the technical vocabulary that is difficult. Then the kinds of sentences, questions, and other syntactic structures involved in being able, let's say, to describe something. And then the kinds of texts that students are listening to, reading and writing, and the conversations that they are engaged in. 
Finally, we're going to be uh, thinking about the cultural pragmatic considerations of engaging with these texts right here above. So you, you, what, what do you have to make explicit when you are engaging culturally with people from other cultures? And uh, we're going to try to find out the cultural linguistic assets that our students are bringing. I'm hoping that when you see, for example, what the students are writing in Italian, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see that. Uh, you will be able to see also how Italian is similar or different to English and being also able to see the cool differences that they are bringing, okay, cultural and linguistic. Um, here's a list of academic language supports, which are the actual scaffolds that you will be using, okay, and you can check more than one. I know this week we are focusing on talk moves, but maybe you are using translanguaging and visuals as well, okay, so check. Here's a uh, space for technology, and it could be the technologies that we are engaging with, such as Zoom, Flipgrid, Edmodo, uh, Padlet, etc. But it can be other technologies that you found useful too. And finally, here you have some modifications for uh, different levels of proficiency. We did an online collaborative reading about this, and it differs so much to provide scaffolds for an entering level student and a commanding level student. So this here is a tool, Wida, that gives you a lot of examples on how to know what to provide for each level. So if you go here, can do descriptors, you will see by grade and by level uh, what students need and um, in the grading level they have nothing to do with level of intelligence it's more about where you are when you are learning a language if you are new if you are new to the language or if you are already experienced with the language okay so you can see how it differs from uh, going from level one where you're matching you're ordering events you're naming things right you're doing more basic things with language to level six where you're already identifying organizing claims providing precision and accuracy etc you will see a progression with with what students are able to do with language so the idea here is not to ask students to do what they are not ready to do yet but also to provide scaffolds so that they can move levels okay so when you're learning a language the most important thing is to be able to move okay so and then you in, in a, a wonderful way to move is with the support of the teacher, the activities and, and, and scaffolds that you provide. Any other materials that you provide, please include here. Um, the last thing that I would like to ask you all is to use the documents that I shared with you, with the groups, uh, to include these four scaffolds. So you're gonna design four of these per group. Okay, so the group, the whole group will design four, it's not individual. And it will help me tremendously if we use the documents that I shared with you because I keep getting so many different emails and documents, so it just helps me keep organized. Okay, so let me know if you have additional questions and keep, we'll keep talking and you will keep experimenting with this for about five weeks. These are only due May 18, the completed ones.